Hi hey everybody, welcome. We're gonna try a little full self driving here on a scenic snowy day in western Wisconsin. So we're in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is just east of the Twin Cities, Minneapolis St. Paul metro area. And we just had a lot of snowfall this last week, so I thought I'd get full self driving out and see how it does. And right away I'm noticing it's just struggling a little bit to hold its position in the lane but that's uh, to be expected because there aren't very strong lane markings here. We've got a stop sign, this is always stop. The car does slow down appropriately. That is a slippery intersection, so that did feel pretty good. Um, I didn't feel any sliding as we approached that. We're gonna take this through a little bit of a residential area and then head into downtown Eau Claire. So the car does wanna be in the left lane to proceed onto the route. It does make that transition very nicely. It's interesting that the stop lights are partially obstructed so the car uh, can still make out the green lights to proceed through the intersection. And here, here we have a typical residential street uh, in the middle of December here in western Wisconsin car is going to want to make a right turn and there's another car right here I'm actually going to take over just because there's a little bit of sliding right there all right so I think the car would have made it but I didn't feel confident where the other car was going to end up in their lane for making the turn so I didn't want to have our car uh, overshoot that turn and get too close to the other vehicle um, other than that I did feel like it slowed down very appropriately for that turn we're going to bring that speed back just a little bit. We are in slow, snowy conditions, uh, so we should be going a little slower. Probably about 20 in a 25 speed zone. I'm using uh, Viking Contact 7 tires. These are winter tires dedicated for driving at this time of year. So it does help a lot with the traction. And I'm finding that the car itself, the navigation, is anticipating some of these slippery conditions during the turn. We're going to make a, a left turn here and see how it does. A little bit of sliding right there, but full self-driving did a great job making it through the turn. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. I've right, got just another little bit of a turn here, and the car is not going to continue on in that. So let's, let's just reprogram the route. We'll get things going here. We're going to go ahead, head downtown to the Pablo Center. Give us a little more time here on these residential streets and again bring that speed back down. Now I've ha I have the set speed at two miles an hour over the speed limit so by default when I turn the car, when I turn full self-driving on it does default to two miles over in this case, it's 25 mile an hour speed zone, so it sets the speed for full self-driving at 27. In the conditions today, that's just too fast, so I brought it back to 20 miles an hour. And I may dial it back even further, just depending on how it does. But it seems to be doing pretty well here. We are at an uncontrolled intersection. The car did make a stop and it checked for traffic and it made that left turn nicely. Of course, not a lot of traffic out here in the streets today. Most people are either hunkered up in their houses or they're out finishing up that last minute holiday shopping. Another stop sign, that was a two-way stop. And a little nervous with that car parked right there, but the car did maintain good velocity. It did not overshoot to the point where the tires would slide and it would not be able to control that. Uh, the roads are fairly contaminated with a lot of uh, hard packed snow underneath and then loose snow right on top so it is very slippery in terms of cornering and stopping in this area. We're going to continue straight through this intersection up to the stoplight and then make a right hand turn to continue on our route. Again another nice scenic day here in Wisconsin. I just love this time of year where snow clings to the trees. We've got that nice blue sky background.
and the bumps in the road don't seem to be uh, hampering our drive in the least bit. All right, we've got a yellow to red light. Car slows down and saw the yellow light. It is making a stop. It's going to be checking here. It's got the hold limit, creep limit. To move forward, we don't have any traffic coming in from the left. So it's fine to make that turn. Now for this route, we're going to want to stay in the right lane to continue on. We do have one stoplight to go through here first, so we're going to wait to see if the car does. Oh, and it's making a lane change. That's interesting. Just going to double check my route here. Yeah, it actually does want to be in the right lane to continue on, so uh, this is a uh, navigation error for the car. But we don't have a lot of traffic. Uh, be a few cars here on the right hand side as we make our way from the red light to green light to get through this intersection, continue on our route. We'll see how the car does with the lane changes back in, or the lane change back into the right, uh, right lane for the turn. Okay, no traffic coming up from the right. The car does signal the change, it makes the turn, makes the change, and we're all set to continue on our route. So just looking ahead at the uh, on-ramp for Business 53, it does look pretty clear. I don't see a lot of ice or snow on this one, so speed is not gonna be an issue going through this. Just the slightest bit of contamination here on the left-hand side. And it's interesting that the car chooses to put two of the tires, the two left tires, over the snow uh, when it does have a clear lane to navigate on. So just a little bit of overshoot there on the uh, on the finish of the turn, and we finish our lane change to the left. So now we're in the center lane. We're going to want to make another lane change. There we go. The signal comes, and the car is moving over. And flow traffic here is just a little higher, so I'm going to set that up. It's about 53 miles an hour. Should go pretty well. So we've got a couple of stoplights coming up here and then a turn, left turn at a stoplight with two left turn lanes. We're gonna see if the car gets into the leftmost lane or the right lane. The leftmost lane would be the most desired of the two to complete this turn. This is a route that I've driven many times before, and with other versions, older versions of full self-driving beta, I've noticed a lot of errors in this particular section of the route. Uh, particularly in the left turn coming up here, where the car does turn to the left and then ends up in the wrong lane to continue on its route into the downtown area. Um, there are two lanes that are gonna be following this light and the left lane continues on. The right lane actually turns into a right lane exit only, right turn exit only lane. Uh, and that's not the lane that we want to be in for this turn. So here on the screen we see uh, just ex excellent visualization of all the cars around us. The stoplight uh, we could see here for the intersection. Um, everything that's behind us and off to the side. Yeah, we're just waiting for the light to change before we can continue on this route. It is a busy Sunday here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Uh, this is the Sunday before uh, the Christmas weekend. So uh, for those of you celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. I hope that you get the relaxation peace and uh, joy that you want for your holiday season all right so i'm going to force a car into the left lane right here because i do want to take this part of the route and it's going to tell me full self-driving is not available there primarily because i confused it so i did want to continue on to another uh, left turn to get into the downtown area 
and I'm just going to get us re-situated right here. So about half the time it does take this route, um, and this was the left turn scenario that I talked about. We did want to be in this lane instead of the right lane. The car in the past has uh, gotten into the, the next lane over the right lane and then continued on too long where it does uh, end and become a right turn only up here. Uh, but I helped the car out this time, so we're going to continue on our route and see how it does for the finish of the drive. Again, just beautiful scenery coming up here. I love love the snow on the trees, the blue sky background. Uh, you really can't beat this time of year here in Eau Claire. And this is interesting. Okay, so this is exactly what I talked about. Uh, the car did put itself in the right lane. You can see by the arrows on the road that that is a right turn only. Uh, did correct for that. Excellent job getting through that complex situation. So we did have a Jeep that turned out in front of us and then made an immediate left turn and our car got into the correct lane and slowed down for the Jeep, allowed him to make the turn. And uh, here we are continuing on our route. So at this point, we're going to drive down uh, this hill that will take us right into our downtown Eau Claire area. And we'll finish up the drive at the Pablo Center. So just kind of recapping so far, uh, I really haven't had any uh, interventions other than taking over so the car could uh, initially taking over so the car would not uh, overturn on a slippery street uh, so that is actually one intervention and then uh, second is is taking over to correct it for navigation to get on a route that I picked versus what the car selected I could have let it continue on would have done just fine so that I won't count as an intervention Okay, we've got a uh, pedestrian getting into a car here. Good, we see that on the visualization. And we're going to want to make a uh, right turn. car does get into their lane. We do have a green arrow with red light. And the car does flow nicely through that. So it slowed down appropriately, made the turn, got into the right lane, the correct lane, after the turn. Uh, that was beautifully done, very masterfully done. So the next thing we're going to want to do on our route here is um, make a left-hand turn. It'll be up here in a little while, so we'll go through a few stoplight intersections. Uh, interestingly, we're going to go through a little construction zone up here as well. And I did see that on the map depicted. We've got some yellow construction markings here on the map. car does a great job. You see the hazard cones on the road. It is it is identifying that it wants to move over to the next lane. However, that is now an oncoming lane because of this construction. Uh, so it corrected itself. It stopped the lane change that it was about to do. And it's continuing on. It does slow down just a little bit for that Jeep encroaching into the intersection. And now it makes the change. So we do have a green light with oncoming traffic. We're going to see how it does here, waiting for the traffic. Nice. See how it finishes the turn. Very nice. That was really well, very well done. The four-way stop intersection right here. Car does slow down for that. Showing this car in the blue so it knows that it's it's in our path and that car is clear so now we proceed through the intersection. And that's going to bring us to the end of our road. but we do have a car turning on around right in the middle of the road here so see how our car reacts to that. Hey everything looked good there. That was, uh, that was wonderfully done. So just a quick recap in terms of driving on that one, we did start in uh, snow-covered 
uh, residential streets and I think the car did very well maintaining traction. There were a few turns that I thought uh, it was a little uncertain how the car was going to handle but it did uh, did a nice job cornering. I did feel sliding in one or two of the turns and I did have to take over in one of the turns just because I felt the car was going a little too fast into the turn and there was a car in that intersection already. Uh, beyond that every uh, Thing else in the drive went went very well. There were just a couple of minor things with uh, the car ending up in the right lane or the correct lane for uh, navigation. But overall, I think that it did a great job driving. Uh, it handled some complex situations here in the downtown area with traffic uh, in the construction area and uh, and getting in its way. So, so yeah, overall, great job for full self driving. I think I would give it a. I think it'd give it a A minus on this drive, actually. I think it did a very nice job. So that's gonna wrap it up for this drive. Just wanna thank you guys for watching and hopefully the next one will be driving full self-driving beta version 11. Cross our fingers and hope to see. Thanks again for watching and we will catch you on the next one.